Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, you beautiful people on YouTube and Facebook and to the whole wide world. My God, you have to love this world. We're so blessed here in America. I was in Walmart the other day, and I was just looking around. My God, you could buy from razor blades to pork chops. My God, and everything else, we're so blessed. If you can't recognize that we blessed, then there's something wrong with you. When you look around in the world and you see everything is going on, and you mean you can't look up to the heavens and heavens and say, you know what? I ain't that much. I'm just a little black dot on a big old sheet of paper bigger than a football field. I'm a little dot. And Lord, I just thank you for you gave me ability to get up this morning in my right mind and make something happen. And that's what we have to do in our life. We have to get up with the expectations to get up and make something happen. My God. Well, you know, God been having me on the last week or two just on love and husband and wife. We got to go back. The Lord told me, he said, go back to the beginning when I meant for it to be a husband and a wife and children in a household. That is the foundation of life. Come on. All the stuff that we're doing now, this is not of God, people. Come on. We are supposed to love God first with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. We're supposed to love him first. He was the first one that created you, so you have to put him first in everything you do. And I know for men, it get tough sometimes. Excuse me. It get tough sometimes. You have to get children to the daycare. Make sure your wife got gas in her car. There's so much you have to do. And fix the fence on uh, mother-in-law's uh, house. Got kid, get the grass cut, the, the snow plow. Uh, I don't know what you're doing as a husband, but as being a husband, I know it can get overwhelming sometimes, but you got to get up with the ideal and the expectations to tell the Lord in the morning, Lord, I thank you for how you have gave me this job. I thank you how you gave me this beautiful wife. I thank you. I looked in the bedroom and I see my three beautiful children. Lord, I thank you. You have to have that in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul each day, the same way we do everything. If women would focus more on God than they do their hair, nails, and their feet, God would show up and bless them. My God. And there's nothing wrong with being beautiful. It's nothing wrong. But when you put that first, then you then you talk about, I don't do no God. But you make an appointment. You there at 8 o'clock at that appointment to get your feet done. My God. You, uh, you, you made that appointment to get to that ball game. You couldn't be late. You argue with your wife, talking about all the boys over there, we watching the game. And you hustle to get there. It's time for us to hustle and be excited for Jesus Christ, God himself, because he said every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So that means you and me going to holler out that we need the Lord, if that make any sense. Let me read this in your hearing, because today we're focusing on, excuse me, let me have a little drink. You get a little drink this morning? Let me see how this tastes. Now, isn't it amazing I make this coffee almost every other day or so? But some days, some days it's just so much better. My God, this coffee hit my spirit right then. Oh, get you something to drink, a little something to eat before you go to work so you don't have no attitude. My God, that coffee good this morning. Let me read this in your hearing. I get excited about Jesus Christ and God himself. And here's the thing. It ain't no real people no more. It's hard. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is hard. Lord, I thank you that you delivered me from this cold. I feel so good this morning. Lord, I thank you this morning. Ooh, if it hadn't have been for the grace and mercy of you, Lord, my God, my friends weren't there. My mama wasn't there. My daddy wasn't there. It was you that talked to me when I was in that new county jail, facing 21 days in there. My God, thank you. I only did 21 days of jail time in my whole life, and that was enough to open my eyes and say, I won't be back here, my God, unless the Lord, unless something happened. And if I go in there, you believe somebody done something to me because I ain't going to do nothing to nobody else unless they bother me, if that makes sense. Well, let me read this because today I really want to key on husband. Where is the husband? And I said yesterday, if you're 25, come on, 30 years old, it ain't no time for no boyfriend. 
You need a husband. Listen, a boyfriend ain't going to do nothing in pregnant you. He's not going to help you get to work. He's not going to help you get your hair, nails, and feet done. My God. And you shouldn't have him trying to do that. You need to have all that established to take care of your own self if no man is around. But brothers, if you are dating a sister, you uh, trying to get engaged, trying to marry you, because them is the two levels when you're over 25 years old. You need to be looking at sisters. And brothers, if you're over 25, you don't need no boyfriend. You need a husband. Come on. Back in biblical days, people got married early. Girls got married at 15. I think Jesus Christ, uh, Mary was impregnated with Jesus Christ between uh, 13 and 15 years old. So women, you that means that your mind is so far past a, 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 a 12 year old boy and a 12 year old girl. Normally, the little girl is a lot more advanced than the little boy. And that's a whole other message. But I just want to key on that we have to get back to the, the proper way that God wanted to be. It's supposed to be a husband, a wife, and children. The husband is supposed to be ahead of the wife in godliness, if possible, or at least on the same page. And if the husband uh, is, is, is far advanced than the wife, he's supposed to pull her to God. My God. And now you know, well as I know, just real talk, there's more women that go to church than men. Right there, that's backwards. Because the house should be full of men. It's a blessing when I see men uh, on TV and, and it's a lot of men in the audience. But normally men are led to church by women. And it should be the other way around. Let me read this in your hearing. It said, Our Lord Jesus himself said, the first greatest commandment was to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. That means you put all into him. Come on. And I know, like we said, life can get so tough being a husband, being a wife, that you can't forget about God. You got to get the children to the daycare, children to school, Come on, lunch, and you have to get to work. So it can be tough. But when you put God first, he starts moving even that out. You come in a routine. You got your clothes laid out the night before. Come on. You got the uh, car seats already established in the car. You ready to go from A to B with smoothness, if that makes sense. Getting up with a happy attitude. I love you, honey. Mwah. Love you too, baby. Mwah. That's where you start off. Say good morning to your brother. Say good morning to your sister. That's the way I was raised. Did I go left? My God, I did a U-turn. But Lord was on my side to bring me back, if that make any sense. Let me see where I stopped at. He said, God, <clears throat> love God, love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Mark 12 and 30 says that also in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, that's Mark 12, chapter 12, and 30, and Deuteronomy 6 and 5. This is the greatest commandment because God has created us first. My God, write that down. God have created us first, foremost to be in relationship with himself. With the, You can't not be dating two girls and you never take the other one out. You're going to lose the one. So that's the way we're doing God. You can't not date the world, but you put him on the back burner. You don't text God. You don't talk to God. And you definitely don't pick him up for no date, if that make any sense. It says, this is the greatest commandment because God has created us first and foremost to be in relationship with himself. This is the foundation. This is the foundation of life. And the foundation of our marriages. If God is not our greatest priority, we have no foundation. That's why your marriage is raggedy, brothers. Because you're trying to do you with that woman and you can't do you with her. I'm a, I got my right hand up if you can't find yours. I had to kill myself to make my marriage beautiful. I had to go in the garage sometime. Bite my lip till it almost bleed on the inside and say, I'm going back in here. My God, I, I tracked down drugs. I tracked down booty call. I tracked down that dope. Come on. I, I knew what a weed man was. So you have to put your hustle the same way you did for all that stuff. 
to do that same thing for Jesus Christ, God in himself. He said, God is not, God is not our greatest priority. We have no foundation. We have no foundation upon which to build our lives or our marriage. My God. Well, I know I've been on here a little long. I just want to get that out. I'll probably be talking about this all week because the Lord just have not let me release on loving people and loving your husband and wife and your children. And that's where we got to start. And if black lives matter, if you're black, let's take care of them sisters. Let's take care of them brothers if you're in a relationship. Done with the chaos and the arguing all day long. And there's no peace in the house, if that makes sense. Well, I love you. You guys be, oh, this is Warning Friday. Warning you from doing something stupid tonight. Don't do nothing stupid. Don't pick them pistols up. If you got a beef with that girl and you're a sister, don't go to that party. You're trying to cause chaos. Well, Pastor, I'm trying to put the fire out. No, you gasoline, baby. You're trying to start something. Stay away from them stupid friends. Don't be bamboozled by people to make you do something that you'll wake up, my God, on Saturday morning talking about facing 15, 20 years because you did something stupid on this warning Friday. Well, I love you. You guys be blessed and be safe.